Hello everyone and welcome back to Night Sky Newscast. I hope your summer has been going well so far. I'm your host, Cheyenne Alapon, science reporter in the Dale the Etheridge Planetarium at the College of Southern Nevada. This week we'll be covering some astronomy news as well as what's up in our night skies. Let's start off strong with a lesser known summer meteor shower you may be able to witness. July 30th marks the peak of the Delta Aquarid meteor shower. It's more visible in the southern hemisphere, but you may be able to watch it if you go far enough out of the city. The radiant, or what appears to be the source of the meteors, is a star called Scat or Delta Aquarii, very low in the southern sky. The star is in the constellation Aquarius and is near the great square of Pegasus. The Delta Aquarids peak at around 2 a.m. and it joins forces with the Perseids as it trickles on throughout the month of August. Tuesday the 1st is just one of two full moons this August. This one is a supermoon and is known as the Sturgeon Moon because this fish could be readily caught in the Great Lakes during this part of summer. The sturgeon is often called a living fossil because of their prehistoric look and has existed since around 136 million years ago. Unfortunately, they're rare now due to pollution and overfishing. Another name is Flying Up Moon from the Cree tribe because this was the time of year when young birds were finally ready to learn how to fly. Stay tuned for future newscasts to learn about the next full moon. Other updates to our night sky is that Mars, Venus, and Jupiter have officially disappeared and dropped into the sun's glare. However, a summer highlight that extends well into autumn is the Summer Triangle. The Summer Triangle is a group of three stars made up of Vega, Altair, and Denim. They rise in the eastern sky and hang high in the southeast. All three stars are a bright white-blue in color. The easiest and brightest star to spot will most likely be directly overhead. This is Vega. It's in the constellation Lyra and is the fifth brightest star in our sky. Vega used to be the North Star in 12,000 BC and will be the North Star again in another 12,000 years or so. And to the right of Vega is Altair. It's in the constellation Aguila. Altair is Arabic for flying eagle. Finally, the last corner is Deneb. It marks the tail of Cygnus the Swan. Deneb is actually the brightest of the three stars, but it doesn't look like it because it's much farther away from us. 2,600 light years away compared to Vega's 25 and Altair's 17. Deneb means tail in Arabic. If you want more detail on how to find the Summer Triangle, come catch a 6 p.m. show at the Dale Etheridge Planetarium for a more comprehensive guide to summer stargazing. Now for some astronomy news you may have missed. July 12th was the James Webb Space Telescope's one-year anniversary. The first full-color images from the Webb Telescope were released on July 12th last year, so while it launched earlier than that, this marks the official beginning of the telescope's mission. NASA released an image of a star nursery inside the constellation Ophiuchus. This is the nearest star from a region to us, so we're able to take the best photos with no stars blocking the view. We also hosted a community event for the Webb anniversary right here at the planetarium. We were joined by NASA Solar System Ambassador Francisco Silva and presented a short film about Webb, along with a live stream by NASA and lots of educational resources. On July 19th, astronomers discovered the strongest evidence yet of two planets sharing the same orbit around a star. Such a thing can exist in theory, but no one has ever actually found it. The evidence was found at a star in the constellation Centaurus. Scientists need a few more years of observations to be sure, but they're hopeful for it. For reference, asteroids that share orbits with planets are incredibly common. There are about 10,000 known asteroids known as Trojans that share the same orbit around the Sun as Jupiter. The actual number is probably in the millions. This certainly makes us question the IAU's decision to categorize Pluto as a dwarf planet. One of their criteria is that a planet must pay the neighborhood around its orbit, which Jupiter kind of hasn't. No shade though. Thank you for watching everyone. Hit that subscribe button if you've missed your regular astronomy news. Feel free to leave any questions in the comments below too. This is Shaina with Night Sky Newscast and until next time, keep your eyes to the skies and stay curious.